Every war has its well-known stories, some of which are so terrible, they're still difficult to believe, despite mounds of evidence. But within the larger scope of major conflicts are often lesser known individual stories, which are likewise unbelievable in their retelling. The following is one such story, one which begins in Honduras and bizarrely ends on the other side of the world. Our story is not concerned with the larger conflict taking place, but only with the unique account of one man, a young soldier whose life would change forever because of something terrible that he witnessed. The mist which hangs before you offers you a choice to pass through or to escape. Beyond it are stories which defy the explanation and fly in the face of what we know to be real. It is a void of both reality and impossibility, of both fact and superstition. You alone are left to discern what to believe as you pass through what we call the fog of war. With the war in Vietnam coming to a close, the late 1970s and early 80s remained a turbulent time for other countries around the world. In Honduras, long-standing government corruption and economic turmoil led to a violent communist revolution. At nearly the same time as the government was usurped by socialist rebels in Honduras, rising support for communism in the nation of Afghanistan resulted in the overthrow of the Afghan government by pro-communist military officers in 1978. Seeking to establish its power, this new and radical Afghan government quickly began implementing extensive land and social reforms that were bitterly resented by the devoutly Muslim and largely anti-communist population. In response, counterinsurgency efforts by tribal and urban groups, collectively known as the Mujahideen, were quickly launched to retake control of the nation. Having been aided by the Soviets in the revolt, the unpopular communist government quickly sought assistance from their foreign communist allies to violently quell any and all forms of domestic opposition, and soon forged even stronger ties with the Soviet Union. With the strength of their new client government waning, in December of 1979, more than 30,000 Soviet troops would cross the border into Afghanistan a move which was intended to end the counter-rebellion, but would only fan the flames of rising support for the Mujahideen. Thus, the long war in Afghanistan began. While urban areas were easier to take control of during their initial campaigns to crush the rising insurgency, guerrilla rebels who lived out in the desert countryside maintained a unique ability to blend into the rural population. So the Soviets' next effort to flush them out was to do so by eliminating Afghani civilian support for the rebels, thus making them outcasts by robbing them of a population to hide in. And just how did the Soviets do this? By bombing and depopulating the rural areas. This violence against innocent civilians only served to increase support for the rebellion, as young men whose loyalty had remained with their family farms and businesses soon realized they could no longer remain bystanders. Their only hope for survival was to join the fight. One such young man, a teenager at that time, was a civilian named Lukman. Like many other young men, Lukman's carefree childhood effectively ended with the onset of the war. He was the son of a government official, Anik Saifullah, a member of the Qad, essentially the Afghan secret police. After the presidential palace was overthrown by the military and his family never heard from him again, Anik was presumed to have died in the fighting while protecting the president. At this onset of the devastating conflict, now without a father to raise him and a mother who had died in childbirth, Lukman had been then sent away from his home in Kabul. During this early period of the war, he then remained in the protective care of his relatives on their farm on the desert outskirts of the city. That is, until the Soviet bombing campaign changed the course of not only his life, but the course of history.
It was only by a stroke of sheer coincidence that Luckman survived the attack, as he was away from the farm at the time, looking for sheep that had run off into the mountains. But when he returned to find his home destroyed, and his family murdered by Soviet men. Like many other young Afghani men, he vowed to avenge his family and joined the resistance. This is not a story of old hope. This is the story of a new hope. when I said that this video was mostly just empty space. Well done, young Padawan. Your trained ability at observation serve you well at will. Or perhaps you got distracted and arrived here by mere coincidence. Either way, you have my respect. Interesting space fact. Despite what is shown in movies, you are more likely to burn to death in space from the sun's radiation rather than freezing. The accumulated temperature of all space in the universe is, of course, cold, on average, but it all depends on whether you are directly exposed to the intense radiation from a star. For instance, the side of the International Space Station that faces the sun reaches extremely high temperatures, while the side facing away from it can reach well, extremely low temperatures. I'm not sure off the top of my head what those temperatures are. Um, and whether you burn or freeze to death, that would of course take place only after the air is ripped from your lungs, causing you to suffocate, while the pockets of gas in your intestines and the small molecules of gases in your blood boil probably painfully, uh, I would assume, out of your body um, into the vacuum of space. It's sort of the same phenomenon, if, if, that, if my understanding of it is correct, that happens when you are scuba diving and you're breathing compressed air at depth in the ocean and then if you don't make decompression stops or decompress sufficiently you know you stop maybe 10 meters below you know you do there's depending on how deep you go there's different levels but maybe 10 meters minimum below the surface of the water what is that like one atmosphere or two atmospheres rather something like that it's been a while since i've been diving but you stop and you continue to breathe until your body kind of acclimates to that level of air pressure before you rise back to the surface. Or otherwise, the pockets of undissolved or unabsorbed nitrogen in your blood would expand and cause decompression sickness. I'm an amateur diver and have experienced decompression sickness, and it's awful. 
especially when the only place to lie down is on the deck of a small and violently rocking dive boat that only serves to add seasickness to make you even more miserable. And even if you don't feel the symptoms of decompression sickness, if you happen to try scuba diving the same day as you have a scheduled flight, well, once that plane reaches cruising altitude, 30-something thousand feet, well, then the nitrogen bubbles would certainly expand in your blood. I, I, I'm not sure if anybody's ever died from this. I could imagine it, it, it's happened, but um, yeah, scary stuff. Well... This video was mostly a prank, so I didn't really, I just didn't want to give it away by having a, you know, a five minute or ten minute video. Um, and I just don't really have anything to fill the rest of the space other than me just rambling. So, if you're interested, well, I guess, you know, like since I'm an artist, right, <laughs> I can show you some of my artwork. Um, really, most of it was done when I was a teenager. But at least, you know that I'm being honest when I say I've been a Star Wars fan for quite some time. These are a couple of sketches I started doing. I actually think one of them, uh, I, don't, I don't have it because a friend of mine saw me sketching and asked me to draw him a picture of Darth Vader. And so that's why I did the Vader and then I think I did Anakin separately. Um, but I gave that Darth Vader picture to a friend of mine so I do not have that anymore but just that really low quality picture that I took uh, probably what 2006 this next one was an art project so you had to take an image which as you can see I, I already had the picture in mind that I wanted to do so I kind of cheated and I just used you know a small section of that image which was Obi-Wan hanging in that reactor core um, I just did like his forehead and then I you know you had to draw the rest of the photo that was a you know graded art project well, then there's this. this. These I did while I was in the Marine Corps. So we had some sort of weekend gathering, the recon guys, and uh, we ended up doing a Star Wars marathon at one of the guys' houses. And I got it in my head that it would be cool to have t-shirts for the occasion or something, you know, something else to do. You know, we were drinking and it was just seemed like a good idea. So before I, I went, or maybe even after I got there, I, I left and I went and picked up a bunch of Hanes t-shirts and some markers and then I was taking requests and then drawing Star Wars characters on t-shirts with permanent marker whatever anybody wanted to request oh that's why I I had drawn a Star Wars shirt I'd drawn this Darth Vader shirt for myself and then when I got to the party everyone's like hey we're well, you know why don't you make us one you know and that's when I you know I, I couldn't help but but acquiesce to their request so yep well, maybe I can give you one little Easter egg hint. If you saw the first episode, uh, The Phantom Menace, you know, after Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan are compromised on the, uh, you know, the, 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 the Federation ship and they're trying to escape, Obi-Wan cracks a joke and he says, You were right about one thing, Master. The negotiations were short. I found a place to insert that joke into the Honduras episode, so... Listen carefully, you might catch it. But uh, I appreciate you sticking around, but uh, yeah, the rest of this is just empty space. So unless you've fallen asleep on me, there's not much else for you to watch here. So if you were hoping to get back to that Honduras episode, here is the link to that video. And it is also in the description section of this video. But appreciate you sticking around. It means a lot. And may the force be with you, always.
Thank you.